In today's video, I will take you through the process of turning the rough casting into a functional crankcase. All of the machining was carried out using these three cutters. I also used a dial indicator and edge finder for setting up the work on the machine. I also had a whole bunch of engine parts from a life and engine lying around, which was quite handy as I needed to use these to test fit to the crankcase to ensure everything was where it should be. All of the dimensions for this project were taken from a pre-existing Lifen engine. The first thing I did was face both sides to ensure that the crankcase half was both flat on each side and the correct width. I did this using my cheap Chinese 50mm end mill with aluminium inserts from AliExpress. I added a couple of millimetres to each of these faces on the foam pattern so I would have enough material to machine off. As you can see, the face mill left an excellent finish and there is no porosity to be found whatsoever throughout the casting. Next, I placed the casting back on the machine and aligned the base of where the top cylinder sits with the x-axis. I did this by taking the average of the high and low with a dial indicator. From there, I set the centre of the crankshaft bearing bore as my x and y zero I located this using my edge finder. The next thing I did was replace the edge finder with a 45 degree chamfer end mill. I used this to spot drill all of the hole locations around the perimeter of the crankcase. I was quite happy as all the holes appeared to be in the correct location. I confirmed this by taking measurements with my digital calipers. The next task was to machine one of the oil galleries for the oil pickup. This was achieved using a 3 flute 6mm end mill with an adaptive toolpath generated in Fusion 360. And here you can see I'm definitely getting my money's worth out of the shop vac. And here's a quick glimpse of the finished oil gallery. The plan was to roughly interpolate all of the holes, leaving one millimetre of extra stock to come through and clean up accurately with a boring head. With that one millimetre of stock to leave, I could also come through and check all of the bore centres to make sure they were accurately spaced. According to my digital calipers, all of the bearing bores were accurate to 0.01 millimetres. The only extra precautions I had taken to achieve this accuracy was to carry out a spring pass to remove any stock left by tool deflection. I then used the contour tool path to remove the rest of the sprue that had been left over from the casting process. So after trial fitting all of the components, the only thing that was left to be done was remove a bit of extra stock to clear the gear selector linkage. So these bearings ended up being a light press fit and I just ended up interpolating them to size as my boring head still hadn't shown up. So now you can enjoy this footage at six times speed of the eight millimeter end mill, removing some weight and making clearance for the gear selector linkage. Here I have the shifter linkage installed, testing to make sure it has enough clearance to operate and function correctly. The last thing left to do is add the stopper bolt for the shifter linkage and drill all of the 5mm holes through the case and tap them M6 by 1. The plan from here is to cast the other half in the next week or so.